If you are listening to this podcast, it means you are searching. Searching for someone who understands you. Someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. Let's welcome your host, ambassador, author, speaker, and mentor, Diane Allen. Diane has the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as she has been there and understands your unique intensities and their challenges. Welcome everybody to Someone Gets Me. And today's episode is an amazing interview I have with this really great guy who lives in Vancouver. And so we're talking from almost the opposite ends of North America. How sweet is technology, right? Well, Eric is this great guy that I know who really has an understanding of relationships. That's right, relationships. I've listened to him and known him for a couple years now, and every time he opens his mouth about a relationship or a lesson or how these things can really work in our favor, he has gems of wisdom. So I begged him to be on the show, and he said yes, and so I'm so excited. He's taking his time out of his day today to talk with us. Eric has a passion for understanding how relationships actually work, not only emotionally, but psychologically and spiritually. He has a great view that's spiritual, emotional, scientific, knowledge-based. It's so well-rounded. It just gives me goosebumps all the time. He's had some amazing life challenges that have helped him get to this place. I'll let him tell you about that. But he has a great personality for really devoting himself to helping people in their relationships so they don't get stuck. So if you've ever been stuck, you want to listen to our guest today, Eric Bensusson. Welcome, Eric. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Diane, for having me on the show. It's great to be here with you and having this conversation. I'm excited. It's very cool because you do have so many neat avenues that you look at things through and how you look at relationships. It's just fascinating to me. So tell us all a little bit about who Eric is. How did you get to this place? And, you know, you're in Vancouver, so what else? Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> where do I start? Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old. I live in Vancouver, uh, but most of my life, for 45 years, I've been uh, living in Paris. So I, I moved five years ago because I needed a real change in my life. I felt completely disconnected with the energy and, and with my life and the people in Paris and uh, and the universe sent me to Vancouver so it was it, it is a great place to be it is a it has been wonderful a wonderful decision for me to come here even if it was very challenging because you know uh, 45 years old you come over you start yeah it, it's really like you start over again so it took me some a while to to be grounded and to settle into the town but the energy here is so beautiful and the nature is pre present everywhere that it really helped me to, to ground myself and to heal. And I think that's what I needed. So that's the, 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 the short version. I'm a father of four wonderful kids, 28. I have a daughter, she's 28, she's living in Belgium. I have two boys, they live in Paris. They are 16 and 14. And I have a five-year-old daughter, she's living in Whistler. And um, it has been a wonderful journey to be a father. I, I consider myself... A different father than anyone else because I don't live with my kids so it's a totally different experience for me but it has been like really uh, wonderful to be able to be the father of those uh, four amazing human beings oh that is so that's just so neat moving across long distance to another country because it didn't feel right so now I have to ask the question is there ever a time in your life that you didn't, weren't understood or people didn't get you, you know, because sometimes I think those of us who are in these helping areas, we come out of it because we look around and like nobody gets us. And it sounds like you've experienced that on like a huge scale. Oh my God. Oh, most of my life I felt that way. You know, I, I, I grew up in a, I grew up thinking that I was different from, from people. I grew up uh, thinking that my parents didn't get me. Uh, and growing up with um, with a sense of I don't know if I belong here, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm adequate adequate to the to this lifetime. Uh, is it for me? And whenever I I went through challenges in my life, there was always this question coming to me. 
and saying, well, maybe this is not, this is not for you. This lifetime is not for you. And maybe there is really something wrong with you, Eric. <laughs> so most of my life, I felt disconnected. I mean, yeah, disconnected and, and different. And my, ex and my experience was, uh, was different than um, anyone else until I got to a point in my life where I went through so many challenges that I thought, well, maybe, Eric, maybe there is nothing wrong with you. What if you start with that new thought and let's see what we can do with that? And that was one of the turning points in my life. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant because I tell everyone, you know, it's like, People might be labeling things wrong with you, but what if it's the thing that's right with you? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's an amazing, amazing thing. What an epiphany, you know, that you came to, to then start seeing you do have a lot of value and you're right where you're supposed to be. And just because they don't understand you, that's them, not you. But we don't know that when we're younger. We don't know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you work now to currently in, in your practice with helping um, people with dealing with relationships in different ways. And you're a transformational relationship coach. So unpack that for us. Are we talking about divorces, marriages, brother, sister, any relationship? What kinds of things do you, are you referring to here? Because I, I love that title. Just already talking to you, I'm sure everyone can hear your great, amazing ability for transformation. But tell us about it. Okay, so one thing that I love to say is the core, the core of my work, the way you feel about yourself creates your life experience. So the relationship you have with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have. So when I, when I talk about relationship, it's, it's everything, okay? It's a relationship with a partner. It's a relationship with parents, relationship with your kids. But it can also be relationship with money, can be relationship with uh, mother nature, because I think everything is about relationship. And my experience in, in this lifetime is really that there is nothing else like relationship where you can learn about yourself, where you can unravel uh, your true personality. And, when, and, and, and as we go from one challenge to another, this is where we get closer to our personality and to, I don't like to say who we truly are, because I think we, it's a bit... Um, a lot of people use that, but you know, you get closer to the core of what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do in this lifetime. So that, that yeah. So, so I, I coach individual, I coach couples, people uh, going uh, through every phase in relationship. It can be just improving relationship, improving communication, but it can also be overcoming a divorce, overcoming an emotional challenge through a relationship. Oh, that so covers it, so yeah. many things. Yes, that, that covers so many things. Uh, the, the thing is, it, it's also related to my, to my story because uh, I have to mention that I have been myself married and divorced three times. So, of course, that shapes a lot uh, the work that I do because um, I came to a point in my life where those challenges have, have been a blessing in my life. But, of course, when I was going through that challenges, at that time, it felt like I was hurt, I was uh, in pain, I was uh, lost, I was ashamed, I was uh, completely um, out of uh, out of control. I would say emotionally, until I get to the to to this place where where I was mentioning earlier, where I felt okay, Eric, if you recreate over and over again the same experience, you know, there might be another way to do that. And the only way that I, that I could find at that time and that I could tell myself was what I told you. Well, there is nothing wrong with you. It's just your experience. And the minute I realized that my experience was just my experience and has nothing to do with me or nothing to do with, with who I am deep down, it shifted everything for me. It shifted everything because then I was not a victim anymore about what happened in my relationship. But I was taking responsibility for how I felt. So let me explain that to you because I think it's very important. And that's, that's one of the first things that I tell all the people who are having a conversation with me or clients. When you break up or when you have a challenge in a relationship, you know, you get trigger, triggered, right? Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, she did that, he did that, 
and you blame others for how you feel, right? One of the biggest realizations in my life was to understand that when I get triggered, it has nothing to do with the situation and has nothing to do with my partner, my mother, my friend, whoever is involved in the situation. Everything has to do with me and everything has to do with how I feel about myself. So, of course, I have some emotional ones from my um, childhood and I carry that. And maybe I carry that also from other lifetime. You know what I mean? And the minute you consider that, the minute you take that, that perspective, well, then you have no other choice to take full responsibility for how you feel. So nobody can make you feel bad or nobody can make you feel happy. But you have the power and you have the, the choice to choose how you want to feel. And of course, this is where the transformation comes from. It's where when you decide that you're going to take full responsibility, you're not going to blame anyone or any life or any challenges, but you're gonna take everything as an opportunity. And that's what I did. And seriously, it has changed my life like I would never imagine so. And so many people are trying not to take responsibility. And you know, we live in a culture that is so into scapegoating and blaming and, and all of those things that, that that probably rings true for some people when you say it to them and other people want to challenge you because they don't want to take responsibility. They want to keep blaming, blaming, blaming. And the point you brought up about being triggered is really important, I think, because when we're triggered, it is in us, you know, and a lot of times, again, that's where that blame and that projection and all that stuff can happen, especially in heated relationships where there's like a lots of contention and things like that. And so the taking responsibility for who you are and what's going on is a huge step. And you actually help people do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely necessary. And as you, as you mentioned, we live in a culture and in a, and in a society where we don't uh, learn how to be responsible. We don't learn all those things. And, and, and of course, so when you get into trouble, it takes a lot of courage afterwards we you know we have programming programmed by the society by the culture by our parents so it takes a lot of courage and a lot of work to say well i'm done with that and there might be another way so show me the way yeah so some people can find the way by themselves and that's great and some people just need some guidance so what i do with the with the clients that i work for i just facilitate the conversation and i just invite them to have a new perspective and, and to be more an observer about their life, that they can understand what was the, the belief behind the situation, what was the pattern, what was the wounds. And then when they create that awareness about what happened, then they can start to make new choices. Then they can start to, to say, okay, this, I'm done with that. This is not serving my life or this is not serving what I want to experience in my life. So then what do I do? So now, if I have a choice and if I have a possibility to create something new, what is it that I really want to experience in my life? Is it more joy? Is it more connection? Is it more happiness? Is it more, I don't know, being connected with nature? It can be anything, right? Mm -hmm. and, but it's really important to create first that awareness and then come from a place of possibility and place of love where you can decide the life you want, where you can decide what do you want to experience in this lifetime. And there is, you know, for me, most I'm 50 years old and I consider that I'm in a great place in my life probably the last three years, right? The last three years, I'm more in the flow. I'm more engaging. I'm more uh, powerful with my life. I'm more a creator of my life. So it took me a long time to get that and, and, and to get to that point. But you don't need to wait until 45 years old to have a revelation. And that's what also what I love about this work. If I coach a lot of young people, 30 years old, you know, 30, 32, 35. And they, they come to me and, and they said, well, there is something wrong in my relationship and what can I do? And I love that the more people are younger, the more people are able to do the work and be brave and be generous about whatever they, they want to bring in, 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 in this world, right? And then they can create the life they want. And it's just wonderful to witness that as a coach. Oh, that's amazing. And, and 
to be able to be with somebody on that journey just has to be the greatest honor. You just have to just love that, I'll bet. Uh, absolutely. So do you ever deal with anybody who um, has the number one issue of, of our audience, and that is overthinking, where they overthink everything and maybe have analysis paralysis where you're suggesting things and maybe they're doing them or not doing them and, and where that overthinking and kind of being in your head too much gets in their way? And, and if so, what kind of suggestions would you give if, you know, I'm sure that one of the people in this audience it overthinks their relationships. And I know that they would probably like a special tip or a hack or a something that will give them something to chew on and go with that could help them with that. Oh, okay. I'm going to try to give you one answer, but there are so many answers to that question, Diane. I think we are all overthinking from time to time. You know, we are too much in our mind. We don't uh, take time to appreciate what life can offer or just be present to our life. See it as a new perspective. So the new perspective that I can give you now, see it like, if you are always in your mind, isn't it kind of limited? <laughs> Very <laughs> so limited. See, absolutely, because it's just a container. You know, your mind is just a container. So think about that. Think about you're in your mind, there is this small container, and you're always in that container or box, you know? So you put yourself into, into this box with everything, with your past, with your stories, with what your wants, with everything. And there is no exit in that, in that box because what, what, whenever you try to get out, you bump into a wall, right? So the perspective is to get outside of the box, outside of the mind. And the only way, I mean, the only way that I know for that is to really focus yourself on the present moment, on what's happening and maybe there is one tip that you can, you can take from that is you have to practice telling yourself, what do I rather want to experience? Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a challenge, you know, you have a challenge with your wife, you have a challenge with your husband, you don't know how to communicate and you overthink and you say, I need to fix that. I need to do that. I need to be a better communicator. He has to change, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So the more you focus on that, the more you make it bigger. So if you get out of that box with all the problems and you just say, okay, if I need to get out of that box and I need to focus on what's working or maybe some solutions, what would that be? If I stop complaining, if I stop blaming, if I take responsibility and if I say to myself, what would I rather want to experience? Well, in my case, I read it, I, I rather wanted to experience more joy. I rather wanted to experience more connection right? What if from that moment now, I can focus only on that, just to focus on that and, and maybe go within yourself and try to find some resources because you, you have the resources just to feel what does it look like to have more joy in your life? For me to have more joy in my life, for example, is being more connected with nature, is making things that make me feel good, is uh, being with my family more, is being with my kids, is, uh, is teaching, is uh, coaching people. You know what I mean? In your case, instead of focusing on what's not working and trying to fix everything, and by the way, there is nothing to fix. <laughs> and, uh, I love to say that. Everything is as it should be. But there is another experience that you can take if you, try, if you change the, your thoughts and if you change your belief system. So to make it short, just imagine that you have a choice today to experience something different. What would it be? And what does it look like? And for some people, it would be really difficult to imagine that, right? But it doesn't matter. Just ask yourself, just asking the question to your mind is the beginning of something different. And you can ask this question every day. And if you don't have any answers for that, and if you don't know what, what does it look like to have more joy or what does it look like to be happy, it doesn't really matter. But if you change the inner dialogue with yourself, at some point when you will feel ready, the answers will come. Really focus yourself on appreciation. That's one thing that I learned in my life. The more you appreciate life, the more you appreciate whatever, you know, it's just, you know, right now, before the, this talk, I made myself a, a coffee and I, I bought a mug and this mug is, there is a, some words on the mug and it's a hug in a mug. Just that, you know, I look at this mug and it makes me feel happy. 
and I, and I take my coffee and I just like it. I just love this moment, you know? And when I'm focusing on what's, what I appreciate right now in that moment, there is no past, there is no future. It doesn't exist. It's just this moment right now. Even if I have the most challenging time in my life, I will just focus on that. And that appreciation will help me to focus on the next appreciation. Then if I look around my, here, I am, so I am in my apartment here, and I can see through, the, through my window, and I can see I have pines, and I have sometimes some uh, squirrels coming, and some birds, I, I just focus on that. And it's, wow, this is beauty, I love that. So the more I focus on the things that makes me feel good or that I can appreciate, the less the voice in your head that wants you to overthink gets louder. So what I want to tell people, it's a practice. It's not like you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get it like right away, bam, and it's done. No, it's a practice and it's a lifetime practice. It's a way of living, Diane, but I'm sure you know that and, and I'm sure you... We already had conversation around that. It's a lifetime practice. So whenever you feel yourself, I'm overthinking, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to that pattern, slow down, breathe, and then go back to what you appreciate. Go back to the present moment. What's happening now? And in that present moment, am I safe? Yes, I'm safe. Nothing can happen in one second, right? It's, it's really a practice and it's really... And being also very compassionate with yourself because I remember a time in my life where, where I was so much in my mind that I would hate that, that I would say to myself, wow, you can, you can get over that. You can do anything else. You can, and you have to bring some compassion. It's okay if you overthink, but you wake up tomorrow morning, try to do something different and maybe just one thing, appreciate one thing. And maybe the next day you go back to overthinking that's okay. Bring love to yourself. Bring compassion. And then get back to the practice. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that I can tell people, that I can assure you that if you practice that on a daily basis with love, with compassion, I mean, in less than three months, you would feel like so much improvement and so much progress. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, Diane. Yes, and, and I think the other thing that's really important that you're saying is the practice is important, but doing it with love and compassion. That it's not about practicing or trying to change because there's something wrong or beating ourselves up or being negative. And what you've just said in the last five minutes was genius. And Mm -hmm. it was very well said. And I believe it too. I agree with you that it's all about the practice and it's about appreciating and having compassion. And we got to love ourselves and have compassion for ourselves. You know, we're on this human journey doing all of us doing the best we can. And so somewhere we have to put down that baseball bat. And, and I love your message because your message is empowering and helping people see that that baseball bat doesn't really have room if you want to transform and grow and be all you're meant to be. So when we have a heart's desire trying to come up, being all negative isn't going to work. So I, I think what you said is very valuable and, I, and, I, um, and powerful too, especially for the young people. I'm glad young people are seeking you out. So Maybe in some levels, you're almost more of a mentor than just a coach, you know, because um, there's more to what you're doing as far as that goes. So that's, that's wonderful. Yes, yes, absolutely. And maybe one more thing that I, that I can add to that is there, there is no perfection. So don't try to be perfect, yeah. you know, don't try to, there is no right or wrong way to be appreciative, you know, whatever you do is okay and, it, and it's enough. And if you change your state of mind, to everything that I do is okay, even when I feel that it's not okay, it's still okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just bring compassion, you just bring love. And one thing you mentioned, self-love. I think self-love is one of the most important things and because it's the relationship you have with yourself. So if you don't love yourself, how can you be able to love others? But I want to tell to the audience that most of my life when I was hearing about self-love, I didn't get it. I didn't get what it was to be, to, to, to love myself. I said, well, I love myself, but in fact, I was still struggling. There is one tip that I want to give you if you hear me. Everything shifted when I realized that I have to be my priority in life. From that moment, I would check with myself. Is this situation feels right for me? Yes or no. Does it make me feel good? Yes or no. 
So this is something that really, really helped me, especially uh, when I was in the midst of the chaos of my, um, my relationship, you know, it was to come back to what matters to me and what works for me. And it has been a huge uh, relief and a huge change when I started to express that first to myself and then to others. And the one thing that I also want to tell people, you have to surrender. So what is surrendering? <laughs> it's very difficult to describe because it's, it's mostly an experience. But surrendering is trusting that whatever you do and whatever you're going through is okay. And you don't have to fix that. You just have to be okay with what's happening. Be okay with your experience. Be okay with who you are now. And always remember one thing that I learned from Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote the, the Four Agreements. Remind yourself that you always do your best. Mm -hmm. And your best today will be different than your best tomorrow. That's true. Doing our best. And... That leads me into my next little part of conversation here, and that is procrastination. And, you know, the number one thing, like, I'm sure you've dealt with people who've stayed in a, in a place they shouldn't have been. And so, you know, I, I did a podcast episode a, a few months back, and I called it graduation or divorce. So either we finish and we graduate and we're excited and happy that we completed the lesson or we hold on too long and it ends up just a crash divorce mess. And I said more than that, but that was the idea. And okay. so I... I think procrastination sometimes has a play in that, uh, has a play in how rough of the rocky road we make it. So do you ever struggle with procrastination? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> from time to time, yes, absolutely. You know what I learned from pro procrastination? is For me now, it's a compass. It's a guide. So if I come to a place where I start to procrastinate, where I start to feel, I feel stuck, instead of judging that situation instead of judging myself for that i just say well there is something that i need to learn there is something that i where i need to focus my attention now so if i were to find what it is that i need to focus my intention what would that be and then i change the inner dialogue with with procrastination you know what i mean so i just take that as an as a, another opportunity for me to grow and evolve and it's also, it, it reminds me that I need to maybe go back to a place within myself where I do feel that I have all the resources to overcome whatever is in my way. You know what I mean? So for me, I, I just take it as a, as a signal or as a, as a beginning of new transformation. I love that. Yes, exactly. This is it. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. How freeing. I'm listening to you and so many people get feel that procrastination and then they get just stuck in it because they start overthinking and they land in there. And your message is quite the opposite, that it's a springboard into where we're headed and to see it as a message, not a trap. So that another wonderful nugget. You are sharing so many wonderful things with us today. Thank you so much. It's like, oh my gosh, the next question, how cool is that? And the next question um, that I would like you to share if, with us is if there's any certain client that you've helped maybe over time that you would like to kind of share their story, obviously keeping their names confidential, but a success story or a process maybe that you took someone through. A lot of people who are highly sensitive and aren't understood have real difficulty with relationships and for lots of reasons, but one of them is that sensitivity. And and I think sometimes when they get stuck in the pain or they don't really know what to do next, there's a lot of confusion. So I'm wondering if you could kind of give just a brief example of a success story of somebody that you worked with or a couple or whoever, where you were able to help them kind of get through the dark times and begin to see the light and especially see their own value. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, I don't think about the specific clients um, about that but here's the thing here's what I can say uh, about that when you feel the pain and when you feel the hurt it has to be felt you have to stop resisting about that and this is one of the things that I teach to all of my clients whether they are in a relationship whether they, they broke up is you have to be okay with the hurt and the pain so what does it mean? It means that the pain and the hurt is here to teach you something. 
And even if you have no idea what it is, and most of the time we have no idea what it is, you just have to feel that. You just have to be okay with being hurt and be okay with feeling that pain. Because most of the time as human beings, what do we do? We resist about things. We don't want the pain. We don't want the hurt. So we hide it. We suppress it. We want to do something else. We don't want to see it, you know? And the more you do that, the more it stays within yourself and stays stuck in your body, stuck somewhere in your mind. And the only way that I know to go through that is to really being able to be okay feeling the pain. And once you feel that pain, well, first, it's make, it makes it easier, of course. Uh, but you just have to sit with the pain. You know, you just have to breathe through the pain. You just have to go through that. And very quickly, when, when you start that, that healing process, well, it can take a few days, a few weeks, and a few months. It depends on, on everyone. But you start to, to realize a lot of things about yourself. You start to realize about maybe that when you feel disconnected, maybe that was just a gem, I like this word, a gem that would tell you, no, this is the beginning of connection. This is the beginning of something else. So it's just an opportunity and a new perspective to take about the pain and about the hurt to get over it. But you have to be courageous. You have to be brave and you have to go through that. There is no other way that I know. And most of my life, if I may share my experience with that, I was resisting about it. I didn't want that. It, it was awful to feel the pain and to feel the hurt. And one day I met someone and she told me, you know, Eric, I see your pain, but you have to stop resisting and you have to surrender. You know, this surrendering that I was, that I was talking about. And the minute she said that to me, I said, wow, there is one person that get me, gets me. I felt so relief, even if I had no idea what she was talking about. But somehow I felt, wow, she knows exactly what I'm going through. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is the, 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 the title of the, of the show. So that's, that's why I, I want to brought up that. And I had no idea what it was. But it made me feel some relief. And then I could say, well, there is another way. So if there is another way, my pain is just anything else, right? I just have to go through that. I just have to take responsibility for that. And it will take the time to heal, but I will go through that. And this is also when I had a, a major shifting point when I realized, well, if I have to go through this pain, there is nothing wrong with me because it's meant to be. And if it's meant to be, let's go, bring it on, you know? And actually, I think we, we as human beings, we, we, we are scared to go through the pain because we don't know what's behind that. And behind that, uh, well, Marianne Williamson will, will, will say it uh, better than I, than I, than I could. Uh, behind that, there is the light. And in fact, as human beings, we are more afraid about our lights, about us shining and about us being in our true potential that most of the time we stay stuck in the pain and the hurt. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can relate with, with, with that, Diane. Oh, yes. You know, I think a lot of people are afraid of their light and the light, you know, not only their own, yeah. but others sometimes. And um, we're so often so trapped in the what's the darkness and the different gradations of mm -hmm. it that that it, it's important to realize that we're all valuable. Like I look at people and say, let's not look at what's wrong with you. Let's look at what's right with you. Mm -hmm. And you're this beautiful, radiant being. And all the other stuff is just clothes you have on. And some of them you probably want to take off because they're stinky, you know, <laughs> like just move mm -hmm. on with them and, and not give power to it. But we're trained to, you know, in this culture mm -hmm. and in this for generations trained and it's backwards and it's ineffective. And so there's a lot of us on the planet waking up and the transformation is that wake up, right? That's the word, one of the words. And, and as you talk, I'm listening to you and I keep having this picture of like progress hang out for a while progress hang out for a while progress hang out for a while almost like you know it's not like drudgery where you're a machine and work 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 all the time mm -hmm. we're meant to have fun we're meant to grow and enjoy the growth even in the hard times that being able to feel fully is a blessing you know people get caught up in addiction and everything else to to stop their own feeling 
are like the walking dead and they're missing life. They're missing what life is all about. It takes all of it to make it rich and full, you know? So I, I love what you're saying about transformation and how you see it. And I think it's a very refreshing way for people, especially people who might be trapped in a, a family lineage of all these same beliefs and same beliefs and same mm-hmm. beliefs. And, and they're looking around and they're like, does it, isn't there another way? Isn't there another perspective? Is this all there is? And I think speaking to you and hearing you confirms that there's lots of other ways. And the way that you're finding and the way you're teaching people is optimistic and hopeful. And, and I'm sure I'm getting goosebumps thinking about the fact that you know, people can talk to you and say, oh, aha, yeah, there is another way. I don't have to overthink all the time. I don't have to be in this rub of procrastination. And my relationships with myself and everyone else can actually work. It doesn't have to be, you know, pain, 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 pain all the time because there's light and joy on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. And and that's a powerful message, you know, because I know a lot of people who say, oh, no, don't get in relationships. It's all bad. And I'm like, no, not unless you, that's not how that works. That's, you know, we're, we've got the wrong belief system going and it's so refreshing. So is there anything that you would like to share with everybody before we close? Like uh, one, anything I didn't ask you, anything you think is important for everybody listening to us today? Yeah, it's probably a reminder. Um, it's, I, I want to tell every people who are listening today, remind yourself all the time that you have within yourself all the resources. You have all the love you need. If you open your heart, you have all the love you need. And that's really true. It's a matter of finding the best way for you to reconnect with that part of yourself where you are fully connected with all the resources. But it is there. And you have to believe it. And you have to have faith. And you have to have, to have trust. And one thing that I learned uh, also in my experience that I want to share very quickly is I learned to trust that when I let go of any expectation, the universe always send me the experience that I need, not especially the experience that I want, right? (laughs) But the experience that I need. And I trust that. So when the experience is coming, whether it's a, a good experience or a difficult one, I'm okay with that because I know that I will grow. I know that I will evolve. And I'm all about personal power and responsibility. Now, now you know it. And I think it's also our responsibility as human beings to do this work. Because if we do this work, we inspire other people to do the same. And this is how we change the world. I mean, this is my way of changing the world, is to show people that there, there are other ways and they are valuable and they are perfect as they are. And there is nothing to fix. But they can find their own way to be connected with themselves. And one, once they find their, this way, they will inspire other people to do the same. Oh, what a beautiful ripple effect. It's even more powerful than pay it forward, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for being on the show today and taking the time. You can connect with Eric at his website, ericbensusson.ca, because he's in Canada. I'll put the link to his website in my show notes, along with how to follow him on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Eric writes amazing articles and really serves the people that are in his audience. And so if any of what he said today resonated with you, and I know it did with me, then follow him and listen to him and let him know you heard him on the show because he really has a lot to share and so much passion. And he, he knows that your relationship with you is the most important relationship ever. He gets it. So there's another person in the world who gets you, me and Eric and many of the other people here. So I hope you enjoyed this show today. I want to thank you again, Eric, for being here with us. And remember, everybody, when you keep your face to the sun, the shadows fall behind you. So you're a rock star. Go out there and show them how it's done. Until next time, be good. Are you tired of searching for someone who understands you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, talented, and wanting to be understood. Diane shares her insights and teachings, and you can connect with others. Join today. Join today.